Welcome to another episode of Eric White Whiskey Studies, and in this video, I'm going to do a head-to-head -head with the Laphroaig 10-year-old Isla Single Malt Scotch Whiskey and the Lechik 10-year-old Single Malt Scotch Whiskey. Now, these are both 10 years old. Obviously, one's from Isla, the other one's from uh, the left coast or west coast of Scotland. Laphroaig is peated anywhere between 40 and 60 ppm, probably 55 ppm. The Lechik is supposedly peated around 37 ppm. The Lechik is non-trifoldered, natural color, and the ABV is 46.3% alcohol by volume. Laphroaig is 43% alcohol by volume here in the United States, uh, or 40% in the UK and uh, Europe. Before I jump into this, uh, a, a few notes. First of all, notice the color on this bottle, the, the Lechik. All right. If you look at some of the pictures of the Lechik uh, online, it, it's a much lighter color. And when I originally reviewed this, I made a few comments. It seemed to me, to some extent, it could have potentially had a touch of sherry cask in it, or it had E150 in it. The website doesn't tell you Jack Diddley, so I wasn't really, really, really sure. I'm now starting to think that they may be using some virgin oak. Why? In July 2023, I was actually at Laphroaig Distillery. I'll be visiting, hopefully, Tobomori, which produces Lechik in uh, April 2024. But when I visited Laphroaig, I was able to, in, in the warehouse, taste uh, some Laphroaig that was 100% virgin cask, virgin oak, virgin oak. And you can see on there, get the string out of the way, uh, you can see on there, it's really, 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 really dark. As far as you know, there are no Scotch whiskeys out there that are just 100% virgin oak because it overwhelms the spirit, overwhelms the malt. So typically virgin oak is being used as a finishing, such as the Deanston virgin oak, and I think Ardman, Ardnamarkin does a virgin oak, and there are a few others out there. And if I look at the color of this virgin oak, and I look at the Lechik, they're pretty close, pretty close. Why would you want to finish a whiskey in virgin oak? There's a certain liveliness and just doing a slight touch of it. Uh, a fresh fruit character from the cast, a little bit more spice. It brings some sort of, I think, my, from my perception, some vibrancy to the whiskey. Again, this is just a theory. I don't know. I was, if somebody out there has more information, I would let me know. I would appreciate it if you let me know and put it in the comment section down below. Otherwise, still a mystery. If I get to visit the distillery in April 2020, for uh, a couple of months from now, I'm, I'll get an answer to that question, hopefully, hopefully. I don't think it's E150, at least I hope not. All right, the Laphroaig, <laughs> Laphroaig, it probably has a little E150. The color is very similar, so they look very, 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 very similar. At this ABV, non full natural color, why would you at that point decide you're gonna put in some E150? I don't know. But I hope not. Now, before I start smelling and tasting, I want to talk about the tongue. Talk about the tongue. When I took a sensory analysis class on wine, I have went back to college years ago and studied winemaking, took a sensory analysis class, and in the textbooks and in the class, they talk about that there uh, are different taste buds on your tongue. Sweet up front, uh, supposedly, uh, salty towards the front but on the sides a little bit back sour and then all the way back supposedly bitter it was in the uh, sensory analysis class in terms of the lectures it was in the textbooks we even in class took like a q-tip and took like it might have been like lemon juice and whatever else different it took sugar water or whatever and you touch the t tip of your tongue with the the q-tip and you know and to do a test to test it even at the time this is what the textbook says. This is what the instructor says. So I didn't challenge it, but at the time, something seemed wrong. It's like, I am not convinced for several reasons that, that that's how you're actually tasting things. Number one is, who eats or drinks anything? Oh, I'm just, I'm having some 
you know, lemonade. I'm just going to put it on the side back here or, or sugar just on the front or whatever else. And then they, they try to explain it. Well, the advantage is with the bitter in the back is if you eat something that's poisonous, a lot of poisonous things are bitter. And so it'd be the last <laughs> ability to spit it out when you detected something bitter in the back. The problem with that theory is when you put something in your mouth, one, even if you don't fill your mouth, your saliva is going to redistribute, uh, or re it's going to move around whatever it is you're eating or tasting. Like you eat something, you'll cup, 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 you chew it up, it moves all over. It doesn't just stick in one particular area. If you drink something, you put it in your mouth, it's going to go all over the, all over the place. Uh, you may notice in when I do my reviews, I tend to talk about the uh, progression of the development of the whiskey uh, on entry, middle, mid palate, and, and finish, and then length of finish. That being said, that being said, I think my observations are valid. I don't think my impression of entry, mid palate, and finish is based upon the location of sensory perceptors, taste perceptors in your tongue. In fact, and I've heard this on the radio, I've heard in, on TV shows, whatever else, as well as on the internet, that supposedly this has been debunked. Uh, there are credible sources online that say, nope, the taste buds are distributed. They're not located in one little spot on your tongue. Okay. <laughs> so, it is not uncommon for science textbooks to not agree with each other. It is not uncommon for whiskey or wine books or whatever books out there to have disagreements on. <laughs> so, just take it with a grain of salt. <laughs> and where are you going to taste that on your taste bud? Right here, supposedly. Take it with a grain of salt when someone tells you that you're tasting different things at different parts of your tongue. And if it's on an exam and that's what's in your textbook, just go ahead and answer it that way, as if, the, yeah, as if that's true, even though it's been debunked. And the reason I'm saying this is because this is in one of my textbooks uh, that is required reading for the Council of Whiskey Masters uh, Master Exam. All right. So let's get into it. These two whiskeys, these two whiskeys, uh, the Lafroig 10 and the Electric 10 year old. Since the Lafroig is a lower ABV, I'm going to start with that one, even though I already know that the Lafroig has a little bit more of an ump in terms of the peat. If you've not had Lafroig 10 year old, this is a must buy under 50 bucks. I think it's like around $43 in, in my neighborhood. A lot of people will stick their nose up at 40 and 43% ABV Scotch whiskeys. They say don't buy anything under 46. Even if that's true, if I would say the Lafroig 10 year old is an exception. It's one you should have. This one's getting pretty close. This is my second or third bottle over the last few years. It's about two, one third left. In fact, yeah, I know this is my, this is my third bottle because I got one for Christmas last year. When this is gone, I will buy another one. Because it's open, has a lot of aeration, I'm getting more fruit than if it was up here. Lemon and lime, a little bit of ashiness, salty sea breeze, a little brine, hint of iodine, seaweed, saltiness, hint of nuttiness, even a little bit of chocolate. The Lechic 10, it smells younger, it smells fresher more vanilla. The smoke is, peat is there, but it's not as intense as the Laphroaig, but it's a close competitor. It's, it's just a wee bit lower intensity than the Laphroaig 10. I mean, it's got plenty going on there. It smells younger, more vanilla, pear, apple, maybe a little bit of stone fruit, a little bit of saltiness, smelling blind, I would not know that it was a Highland and not an Isla. It smells like an Isla. I'm going to go ahead on the palate, starting with the Lechic. On the palate, it is fairly sweet up front, fresh fruit. It's very lively. Peat kicks, kicks in, smoky character kicks in. 
uh, about a third to the mid palate. There's a nuttiness there, a little bit of chocolate. It has a decent amount of weight and mouth coating feel. The Laphroaig 10 year old. Laphroaig 10 has a much bigger punch of peat and smoke in the mid palate. It has more going on in the mid palate because of the intensity of the smoke. It also has a little bit more spiciness, more chocolate, a tarry note, earthier note. This is fresher, livelier, fruitier. This is earthier, more rustic, smokier, peatier, and more <laughs> about three quarters of the way back. This Lofork also feels thinner. You can tell the ABV di uh, difference. But it has so much flavor going on from the intensity of the smoke and the peat, and once it's aerated and uh, getting the fruit in there, you get lemon and lime, mostly I would say lemon and lime, and on the back end, on the finish, I get a little bit of a chocolate with a little bit of a mint. Reminds me of a York's peppermint patty. So both the peat and the smoke character of these are, I would say, are really close. Like the Laphroaig is here. You know, if you think of an Octomore is here, and you know, Laphroaig is here and Lechic is there. I mean, it's just, just a little bit below. This is fruitier, fresher, livelier. It's in some ways it has more distinctions between the front and the middle into the finish, but the Laphroaig has that sort of earthy, deeper, darker, and, and spicier character, and then that, that mint that goes into the finish. And, and but it feels a little thinner. So I like both of these whiskeys a lot, but for different reasons. I like that fresh fruit character of the Lechic. I like the more, you know, slightly heavier, more mouthfeel, a little maybe creamier, oilier, and mouth coating feel. Uh, but I also like that uh, kind of peat character show up in the mid palate. It, it's got a lot more presence in the mid palate in terms of uh, uh, flavors, but not in terms of mouth feel. And it has an ashier, smokier, longer finish. So my recommendations are gonna be, if you're still getting used to peat, this is the big jump. But some people, they don't have to wade their way into peat. They can start off with a big peat and they like it right from the, right from the finish. So this is a heavier peat. This is, I think, probably more affordable if I recall from my, from my notes. Uh, this is, I think it has a longer finish. I like the finish of the Laphroaig, but this is a fresher, fruitier character, particularly on entry and a slightly creamier, rounder uh, mouthfeel. I like them both for different reasons. I have a great difficulty uh, saying that I like one more than the other um, I, I, and score them that way. I'm just gonna say they're different without scoring them. There's, there would be some times in which I'm gonna refer, uh, prefer the Lechic 10 year old and there's gonna be other times when I'm gonna prefer the Laphroaig uh, 10 year old. Score wise, score wise, uh, uh, I don't know, under 90, probably 88, some, somewhere around there. I like these like these both. Alrighty, uh, that's it for this uh, review and study. If you have subscribed to this channel, I want to thank you very much. If you've not yet subscribed, I want to thank you very much for watching and ask that you subscribe and ring the bell to be notified when I go live or post a new video. Until next time, Slanja. Hey, don't forget to subscribe and check out these other whiskey videos.